Hello everyone, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we are going to discuss about the cell membrane composition of the typical eukaryotic cells. So let us see what are the different components that makes up the cell membrane of a eukaryotic cell. The study of the eukaryotic cell membrane was mostly performed in case of the human red blood cells. So all these findings were mostly done based on the study in by the human red blood cells. The cell membrane of the eukaryotes, these are composed of lipids and they are arranged in a bilayer. To understand this structure of the bilayer, let us consider it on this picture. So you can see the yellow basic layer, these are made up of the lipids and they are, form a, they are forming a bilayer. This lipids we are talking about, these lipids have got two basic structures. They have got a head which is polar, that means water and they are water loving. They have got tail which is hydrophilic that is water hating they do not like water and these are non-polar now based on this they have been arranged in a bilayer and you can see this high water loving area that is the head regions which are hydrophilic they lie outside because outer environment there is more probability to interact with aqueous type of environments so they lie outside whereas the inner layer that is the tails they are hydrophobic they fear or they do not like water that's the reason they need to be protected from aqueous environment. Hence, the bilayer, you can see the tails are present inside this layer. So they are protected and they form the bilayer. Now, uh, so they have formed a bilayer and we have discussed that the polar head, they lie on the outer side because they can interact with the aqueous environment. Now, in addition to these lipid layers, they also possess the proteins and carbohydrates. So here we can see glycoprotein so these are carbohydrates associated with proteins glycolipids so uh, carbohydrates which are associated with lipid molecules also there are simple carbohydrates also and there are different proteins that are embedded into this lipid bilayer now the uh, membrane proteins we are talking about this membrane proteins we are talking about can be of three different types based on their position or how they are present in the lipid bilayer the first type is known as the peripheral protein. So from the name we can understand these are present on the outer side of the membrane. So this is an example of a peripheral protein. You can see it is present in the outer layer of the membrane. The next type is the integral protein. So these proteins they are embedded into the bilayer. So these are this is an example of an integral protein. As you can see this is embedded into the bilayer. And the third type is a very interesting type. This is known as a transmembrane protein. A very good example of a transmembrane protein is alpha helix protein. As you can see, the property of the transmembrane protein is that they hover both the layers. So they cover both the outer and the inner layer. These type of proteins actually make the channel proteins and these channel proteins, they help in movement of molecules from uh, outer or the inner part of the membrane uh, and actually they help in the movement of molecules from outside or inside the cellular membrane. Now based on these observations, two scientists named Singer and Nicholson in the year 1972, they tried to jot down these observations and tried to give a model structure to this cell membrane. And their model came to be known as the fluid mosaic model. According to their model, they say that the basic structure is made up of the lipid molecules and in this basic structure of the lipid molecules, the proteins and the carbohydrates are embedded and they give a structure or they give an appearance of a mosaic type of appearance. So on the base of our lipid, there are proteins which give a mosaic type of model or mosaic appearance. Hence it has been named as the fluid mosaic model. Now why fluid? Because the quasi fluid nature of the lipid membrane, it gives a fluidity nature because of this nature, it enables the lateral movement of the proteins within the overall bilayer. So these, pro, uh, these lipid layer, they, it, it, it has got a quasi fluid like nature because of this the proteins can move from one place to another and specifically lateral movement of the proteins is possible within the bilayer now this property or the ability of the molecules to move within the membrane this property is known as the fluidity of the of these type of lipid bilayers now this fluidity actually depends on the type of the lipids which is present over there so different types of cells have different levels of fluidity so in this video, we have talked about the cellular membrane of the eukaryotic cells. We have talked about the lipid bilayer, how it looks. We have talked about the different types of membrane proteins that are present. That is three different types. 
peripheral protein, integral protein and transmembrane protein. We have talked about a very important model for the cellular membrane of the eukaryotes as proposed by Singer and Nicholson which is known as the fluid mosaic model and we have discussed what this fluid mosaic model and we have also discussed an important property of this lipid membrane that is the fluidity of lipids. So I hope you have understood and like this video. Thank you.